Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the updated model of the Ocatel P2001. Now, a few months ago, I reviewed the Kickstarter launch for this power station, and it had one major problem. That was that the DC output over here would shut off after four hours. And so if you wanted to run a 12 volt compressor fridge or a CPAP or any other DC load off the DC output, it would shut off after four hours. Well, they've reached out and they've sent out their updated model. This is just the version that you can purchase on Amazon. And this no longer has any four hour shut off. Now, even though the main purpose of this video is to demonstrate that the DC output no longer shuts off, I also wanna show you guys some demonstrations of running some large power tools off the inverter because this is very capable of running you know, an air compressor or a large miter saw. Now this also has the ability to run a full-size refrigerator in the case of a long-term power outage, especially if you have some solar panels because you can plug in up to 500 watts of solar to keep this guy charged up whenever that fridge is running. Now they've updated the price on this power station. Usually you could pick it up for $16.99 on Amazon. They have a $200 off coupon that's valid right now to bring the price down to $14.99. And for you guys, my viewers, I have an additional $200 off discount code to bring the price down to $12.99. Now that's the best price that I've seen on this since the actual Kickstarter launch. So if you are interested in picking up a lithium iron phosphate power station, this is currently one of the best options for the price. Let's first go ahead and jump into the results of testing the DC output. Now I actually plugged in my Iceco Go 20 12 volt compressor fridge and I had this charged up to 100%. And I started the test at 6 p.m. on a Thursday night right after my day job. So I let this run. I was really busy for the next couple of days, so I didn't really check in on it. The next time I had a chance to come back, it was Saturday at 2 p.m. The fridge was actually still running, so it didn't shut off the DC output. And the battery was sitting at 52%, meaning we only pulled 48% over a 44-hour time period. So what are the takeaways from this test? Well. We know that the Amazon version of this power station, the updated version, does not have an auto shutoff setting on the DC output. So thumbs up, Occutel. Thank you for fixing that. The other thing we learned is that the DC output has a very low parasitic drain. We are able to power a fridge and have the DC output enabled for that long period of time. We only lost 48% on the battery during a 44 hour run test. So very good results. This doesn't have much parasitic drain on the DC output. Now, believe it or not, one of the best ways to test uh, the inverter of a power station is by running it on a full-size microwave. This is probably one of the larger appliances in your house. This is a thousand watt microwave, and it ends up pulling around 1800 watts uh, from a wall outlet at 120 volts. So this is basically hitting the max 15 amps that you would have any appliance indoors. Usually if you have lights plugged into the same circuit, as your microwave, the lights will actually flicker because there's a lot of surge current when this turns on. So I have this plugged into the Ocatel uh, inverter. We're gonna see if we can power it up and if there's any issues when we're running the inverter. Okay, so I didn't see any flickering. The microwave sounds completely normal. The fan is working properly. Um, this does have a pure sine wave inverter, so we're not gonna see any uh, weird issues. You would not wanna run a microwave off a modified sine wave. So uh, it looks to be working just fine. So if you had some sort of power outage, you could boil water or cook food using a microwave. Now it was pulling around 1500 watts and that's because this has 110 volt inverter versus 120 volts. So it doesn't pull quite as many watts, but you can see it ran just fine. Okay, so the first test that I'm gonna do on the AC inverter, at least with my power tools, is I'm gonna try running this 10 inch compounds uh, sliding miter saw. This is the biggest saw that I have. I don't have a table saw, so this is going to have to do. This is still a big saw. So let's go ahead and cut this piece of wood a bunch. Okay, so it ran the saw just fine. Okay, so the next power tool that I wanna to try running is this uh, air compressor here. Now this has a lot of surge current when it starts up. So I have it plugged in, let's go ahead and turn it on.
okay, it was pulling around 900 watts, no issues. Okay guys, the last test that I'm gonna do on the AC inverter, at least with power tools, is this 3000 PSI electric pressure washer. Now I have the most high pressure tip on here, so it's gonna make the motor work uh, as hard as it can. Let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, no issues. Okay, so I finished the testing that I wanted to do on the AC inverter. So hopefully that uh, gives you an idea of what you can run off this AC inverter in case of a power outage or if you just need to have power somewhere off where you can't get it, you can basically put this power station out there and run any power tool that you need. Now I also did a full size refrigerator run test just to see how long a fridge would run off of a single charge on this power station. I was able to run this off the fridge in my basement and I ran the fridge for about 14 hours and came back and checked in on it and it was sitting around 45% capacity remaining. Meaning that you probably get around 20 to 24 hours depending on how hot your room was and how often your fridge had to run. So very good results. So you could definitely get through a night and then have the next day to charge it up with solar panels. So this would definitely make a good backup option if you needed to run a full size fridge if the power is out for a long period of time. Now speaking of charging with solar panels, this has the ability to charge at 500 watts. And during my initial review, I was able to hit a 500 watt charging limit on this power station. So you could charge it up in around three and a half to four hours using solar panels. Now this also has the ability to charge up extremely fast using um, your AC wall outlet or a gas generator. All you have to do is plug in the one power cable to your power source and this will supercharge at 1100 watts. That means you can charge this in about a one and a half hours to two hours depending on the state of charge. Now you can actually dual charge this power station with solar panels and with AC uh, wall charging for a total of 1500 watts. So very capable charging power station. Now the great thing about this is there are no external charging bricks. All you have to worry about are the cables that come with the power station and they're stored in this little, uh, little pocket up here, little storage area, which is super awesome. That just means there's no extra things that you have to take with this power station. You just bring this, you have the charging cables and you're good to go. Okay, so I wanna take a second to talk about the batteries inside this power station. Now I mentioned before that this is a lithium iron phosphate power station, meaning that the batteries inside, they aren't flammable at all, there's no fire risk. And it's rated to have 3,500 life cycles to 70% capacity, meaning you can charge and discharge this 3,500 times and you should still have 70% of the original capacity. Now this is rated to have 2,000 watt hours of capacity meaning that you can run a 2000 watt load for an hour or a 1000 watt load for two hours or a 500 watt load for four hours. So that's 2000 watt hours. And I always like to do discharge tests to see what the actual capacity is because some companies will advertise a certain amount, but you wanna see what the real capacity is. So every time I've discharged this battery and also the old one, I've gotten around 1600 watt hours of capacity. Now that result of 1600 watt hours comes out to be right around 80% of the advertised capacity. Now some other 2000 watt hour power stations that I've tested usually come in around 85% to 88%. So you do get more capacity on those, uh, you know, bigger brand name or more expensive power stations, but you also pay more money for them. So I'd still say the ratio to power is very similar to those compared to this one. And the price point of this coming in at $12.99 is still very good value. Just wanted to let you guys know that this does not get the 2000 watt hours that it's advertised to get. It comes in more around the 1600 mark when other power stations come in at around 1800 to 1750. So you'll get a little bit less runtime on this, but you also spend a little bit less money. Now that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about about the new update on the firmware of this power station. It's really good to see that the auto shutoff setting has been resolved. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, well, where's my Ocatel that I had the first time? Well, my dad has actually been using it as a backup solution for his home office. Uh, they have some construction going on in their area and his power has been cutting out quite frequently. He works from home. And so he's actually been using it with his uh, monitors, his router, and his desktop for work all plugged into it. So whenever the power goes out, it just swaps right over to the internal batteries and he's able to continue to work with internet even though the power's out in his house. So this is a very good backup solution, especially if you have a home office that your power goes out. 
You just plug in your router, your monitors, your uh, laptop or desktop, and you'll be good to go. Now, if you guys want to see my full detailed review of this power station, I'll include that down in the video description where I talk about the UPS mode, uh, the USB output, and I go over full charging demos, things like that. Um, I'll also have those two videos that I did on this pop up here uh, at the end of the video so you can just click right on them. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback about the pricing on this at $12.99. Is it something you guys would pick up? I've been very impressed with the performance of my testing today. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.